<laughs> All right, today we're on a small little local lake that I have never ever been to. We're gonna do something kind of cool, at least for me, is something I would really like to watch if I was gonna watch somebody's YouTube video. So, Bassmaster has a magazine article called A Day on the Lake where they pick up a pro, they go to a lake the pro's never been to, and they just talk through it all day long. They talk about what the pro's doing, the adjustments they make. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do a day on the lake on a lake that I have never seen. So right here, we've got, we got the name of the lake right here, which we may not wanna have, but it'll be okay. We're just kinda of zooming in and out on the map right here, kinda of scrolling around. You can see we put in right there. We've just been kinda of drifting and Kind of trying to figure out what exactly is going to be the hot spots on this lake or at least what i think it's going to be so you can see right here we've got a bank this entire side of the of the lake has a little bit deeper water this over here is a little bit more flat which right now a lot of the fish should be spawning so this flat stuff is going to be pretty important pretty key but also down here you've got a deep hole out in the middle deep part like right in the middle which is pretty typical the creek channel comes down right here around these docks and stuff so we'll be able to see a little bit deeper water right here back here we've got that's probably I don't know if that's a river coming in or going out, but I'm gonna assume it's a, it's a little creek or river coming in. So we've got two or three different mouths of rivers and creeks that are really, really key, just typically. That's where a lot of fish are gonna be. It's where a lot of bait's gonna, gonna be, a lot of moving water typically. So out here in front of it, there, a lot of times there'll be grass in the front of all of them. This one may be a little bit too deep to have grass out in the middle, but right up here where there's gonna be shallow flats and stuff like right here's four feet of water there should be a good bit of grass out here in these bays right in front of these mouths should be a good bit of grass on all this shallow stuff but the grass right here is just going to have a more defined lines a little bit cleaner and crisp edges to it and then up here you can see we got a couple little little canals that we can go up in a couple rivers we can go up in a couple little backwaters we can go up in so for the most part i'm going to be looking for this time of year high spots close to the bank where these fish will be spawning. I'm gonna look for these creek mouths, try to catch some pre-spawns and post-spawn, so they'll be spawning for a little while. And then a the, lot of the bait and a lot of the fish that are actively feeding, probably gonna be a little bit some of this grass close to some of these deeper water holes, or close to some of these creek mouths. So that's what we're kind of looking for. We still gotta go piece it together and figure out exactly what we wanna do. I think some of my starting spots are gonna be, I think I'm gonna run down here to this side of the lake and go start on some of this shallow main lake stuff and just try to see if I can, you know, find some of those fish that are spawning up there or feeding aggressively. And if I can't do that, then I'll probably run across and go back in some of these canals, look for some bedfish, because I love, love, love to bedfish. So come over here, go on some of these little canals, little backwaters, go look around. And if neither of these two things are working, we're gonna back off offshore, try to catch some of those big females that are out on the outside edge of grass on some of these reed clumps that are on high spots, all that type of stuff. So we just still, we have an idea of where the fish probably will be, but we still gotta go figure out exactly where they are because the fish don't read a book. They don't have the textbook. So all we do is make educated guesses and then try to go dial it in and make adjustments throughout the day. So we're gonna try to do a good job of talking through that as much as possible today. Let's go right around on this little small little local lake and try to figure out how to pronounce it and also try to catch a bass or two. So let's go. God, what is that? What's that? A bowfin, I think. Yeah, dude, that thing is huge. What was that thing? <laughs> oh Lord! Oh Lord! How, so like, how many pounds was that? Fifty. Fifty? Yeah, it was like twelve. Dude, that thing was huge. Oh my God! We caught a little bit of an audible. And we're gonna see if we can get in this canal right here. Still low light, gonna be kind of hard to see in the actual canal, but we're gonna see if we can get in there and look for beds. See if there's any beds, just kind of check the check the deal. Just didn't want to drive by it to go to the main lake stuff that I was, you know, attempting to fish. I did um, live scope around right out in front of the ramp for less than 10 minutes, just trying to get a plan together and uh, hooked a world record bow fin. No, I'm joking. It wasn't a world record, but it was a dang big one. But I'm gonna get up in here and see if there's a bass or two. Should be. I really like these uh, canals with these gates in front because what it does is actually keeps grass out so you can see the bottom a good bit better. So I like the gates. So 
So we just busted our way in through the gate. The clarity is not great in here. But if they're shallow, I'll be able to see them. So my setup right here, I've got this X-Wrap prop tied to about a 18 inch monofilament leader, 15 pound mono. This is the, uh, I think it's the shooter monofilament actually. But I have to go back and look, it's the gray stuff. This is 30 pound SX-1 Sunline, Mainline. You just cast so well with that braid. It makes me want to, you know, throw braid. A little bit of mono just so you, that you're... Dang, one just came right beside the boat. A little bit of mono just so your braid doesn't go get wrapped around the prop of the bait or the front hook. So just that mono is a little bit more rigid, a little bit less limp. It just holds that line out in front more. So and you need to use mono because it floats instead of fluorocarbon. So that's the setup for the prop. I'm feeling the frog. Feeling the frog. I wasn't looking that time. I don't know if he got it. That might be a mudfish. First little bed fish. First fish on this lake. Which is what I wanted to do. It's bed fish. It's just peeing like crazy so he just up there on the side of them reeds i think there was a bigger female in there at first because it looked like there was about a two and a half in there so my setup is a five volt flipping hook and an unpegged quarter ounce weight and then any kind of little crawl i got some that i prefer but <clears throat> any kind of little crawl is really really good little worms anything anything they can get Whenever they're, they're not really trying to eat it. So anything they can really get in their mouth easily is a good flipping bait for bed fishing. Oh, there's a nice one. Looks like it's just cruising through there though. All right, so we made a little adjustment was back in that river for a long time actually saw a bunch of fish didn't see many that i thought were catchable i did catch i don't know one two saw some big ones had one about seven pounds nose up on my bait then i never seen it again not sure if it was even trying to spawn where it swam up to but definitely showed interest in my bait but after that it got very tough in there to catch one. I still seen them. Seen them the entire time. I got a little one right here in this big hole out here. We're on the main lake. Big eelgrass flat right now. This fish is very active, but not aggressive. Swimming around a lot. I just can't get it to really show my bait much attention which is not a big one somebody might have already caught it 
a little bit closer where I can see it a little bit better. I don't think it's very big. He was a little booger. It's a pretty one though. Look at how white he is. It's a five alt gamakatsu, straight shank. It's a pretty fish. He was, he was a booger. All right, so I just went up shallow, fish down, pretty good bank. Called a pickerel. Saw some tiny bass and had one bass bite that was probably a pound and a quarter. So back to the offshore eelgrass holes, which is where they definitely seem to be. At least that's where I've seen them the best today. Didn't have to go far. already saw one all right made another adjustment to the other side of the lake a lot more tall and choked out eelgrass over here which is fine as long as I find some holes I just pulled up on one really good hole Got way too close to it, then pitched in it, and then a little buck followed it out, then swam off. So they're on this side too. This lake has a lot of fish, a whole lot of fish. I really like this lake. I just wish I would have fished it a little bit different today because wasted quite a bit of time doing dumb stuff that sometimes we do, you know. I got in the trap trying to fish for fish that ain't gonna bite and they're on bed and they, I like the challenge. When I, when I feel like it's gonna be very difficult to catch one, it makes you wanna catch it that much more. But it's not the smartest thing to do sometimes whenever you're trying to catch them. I leave them suckers in a heartbeat in a tournament. There is too much eelgrass here. There are all like no holes. This one looks a little bit bigger. Talking to the camera, huh? I said this one looks a little bit bigger. Can't see this one super well. Wind's blowing, he's really, really deep. And really, really small, it looks like. I thought he had it. The way he nosed up on that sucker. I thought he was caught. He just ate my weight. Ate my weight, not my bait. There's another one. A little, little better. Hooked him on the bottom lip. Two pounder probably. It's a pretty good one. Just in one of these big holes in the eelgrass. Pretty, you know, obvious deal. So we're back at the house now. You know, that was a really, really cool lake. We got kind of caught up though. I made a little bit of a mental mistake. I saw some really, really nice ones that were not really set up to bite. And I knew it, I knew it early on. But I like the challenge. I like trying to catch them. I like trying to like force it to happen just because, you know, whenever you got one that's really, really tough to make bite, figuring out how to make that fish bite is extremely rewarding. But 
didn't happen so I wasted a ton of the day a big big bulk of the day I actually wasted looking at some fish that were never ever going to bite that's a big mistake I would have never done that in a tournament but it's hard to leave when you're looking at a bunch of four to seven pounders you know it's very very difficult to leave but a really really cool lake lots of grass not like tons of fish we saw a ton whenever we finally got on the right deal and actually started catching them we saw a ton but saw a lot of the lake I would really really like to go back don't think we're gonna be able to in the next you know couple of weeks but phenomenal lake really happy that we went over there and got to see it because the fish were kind of set up in a little bit different way than I normally see them they're really really deep spawning some of those eelgrass holes out there really close to the main lake like in the middle of the lake where I wouldn't have expected it so it's really fun cool lake and just wish I wouldn't have wasted quite as much time on those ones that weren't going to bite but I appreciate y'all guys watching and we're gonna go to another small local lake tomorrow and try to maybe make some better decisions throughout the day and catch some so it'll be fun we'll see y'all